today we learn how to implement loops using for loop ok. So, let us take our first problem on loops it was draw a flow chart to print first 10 positive integers we had done it using a decision box and a variable num ok. So, now if I have to uh, draw a flow chart using a for loop it will be like this start I need not to input anything so directly my for loop will start. So, for if I take the same variable num, so for num is equal to 1 to 10 because num has to go up to 10. For num is equal to 1 to 10, I may just have a comma here if I want step 1. Step 1 means every time num is going to get incremented by 1. So, for num is equal to 1 to 10 step 1 ok. Uh, now, I am closing my brackets. Please remember this is a generalized statement uh, for uh, uh, representing a for loop using flow, ch flow charts it is not according to any particular language ok. So, for num is equal to 1 to 10 step 1 what I have to do I have to print the value of num. So, I will just write print num ok. So, there is only one statement inside this for loop. So, and then every time I go up ok. So, when I go up the value of num gets increased because my step size is 1. So, value of num will get incremented by 1. So, second time when I come down, so I will be printing 2, third time I will be printing 3 ok and so on the, at last I will be printing 10 ok. So, whenever num becomes greater than 10 because this loop will get executed from 1 to 10 only whenever it becomes greater than 10 then what happens I will come here and I will stop. It means the loop gets executed only when num is from 1 to 10 ok and every time it is getting incremented by 1. Whenever num becomes greater than 10 then what do I do? I come down and I stop ok. So, the body of loop I have represented using uh, dotted lines and uh, there is only one statement so far inside this loop there is only one statement ok fine. So, now let us come to our uh, second problem which was done using loops. I have to draw a flow chart to print first n positive integers ok. So, start I will have to input value of n. ok. So, this time I am not using num I am using some normally people use sorter variables like i j k. So, I am using a variable i for a change ok. So, I will just write for i what is what should be the initial value which has to be printed first value to be printed 1 i is equal to 1 2 the last value which we have to print is n. So, for i is equal to 1 to n step 1 ok. What am I doing after this? Print the value of i ok. So, this is this is the body of for loop from here to here. Okay. In fact, there is only one statement inside for loop and after this what do we do? We stop. So, in place of num I have used i because normally people use i j k ok. So, start input n for i is equal to 1 to n step 1 print i ok. So, inside this for loop now there is only one statement and after that once we come out of for loop whenever the value of i becomes greater than n then what happens we come out of the for loop and we stop ok. Because every time we are incrementing i by 1. So, 
uh, till the time i is smaller than or equal to n will be printing the value of i but once i becomes greater than n we come out of the loop and we stop okay fine now let us solve this bogilal problem using for loop so start input n so what is there bogilal sells mangoes draw flowchart to generate bill for n customer so we require a for loop which has to get executed n times okay so what we can do we need not to take any counter we can just say we can take a for loop for i is equal to 1 to n step 1 For every customer, what we have to do? Input number of mangoes and rate. Bill is equal to number of mangoes into rate. print bill and stop. Stop means print bill and then we have to go up because we have to do this calculation for how many customers and customers. So, this is the body of for loop. Okay. So, this time how many statements are there inside this for loop? 1, 2 and 3. Okay, so, inside body of for loop now there are three statements and uh, this loop will get executed from 1 to n. Okay, it means it will get executed n number of times. Whenever value of i becomes greater than n, then what do we do? We come down and coming down means we just stop. Okay. So, coming down means we just stop. I write here stop. So, let us take one more problem draw a flow chart to find sum of following series up to n terms sum is equal to 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 up to n. Okay, so, now we will be doing it using a for loop. So, I start from here start first of all we need to know what is the value of n. So, input n and then we need to initialize. I am initializing sum to 0 and uh, sign is equal to 1 because first time sign is positive. Okay. And then my for loop starts because I have to do my calculations n times. So, I will start writing like this for i is equal to 1 to n because my for loop has to get executed n times step. 1. What do I do in my for loop? Inside the body of for loop, my first statement is sum is equal to old sum, whatever the old value was there, plus sign into i. Okay, here I was writing sign into c, but in this case because then c was a counter and it was getting incremented by 1. Now, i is getting incremented by 1. So, what I have written sum is equal to sum plus sign into i. Okay. And then I am updating my sign, sign is minus of sign. So, whatever is the value of sign it becomes minus of that sign. So, these are two statements inside for loop. So, I am indicating my for loop like this and these are two statements inside for loop. Okay. Whenever i becomes greater than n then i come down. Okay. 
it means my work is done and then what do I write first of all I, I write print the value of sum okay. and after that I write stop. Okay. So, these two statements will get executed n times from because value of i is starting from 1 and it is going up to n and after that I okay, will come out whenever i becomes greater than n I come out and I print the value of final sum and I stop. Okay. Now, let us take one more problem using for loop using for loop draw flow chart to print first n positive integers in reverse order. So, start Now, if n is equal to 10, so now I have to print 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 up to 1. Okay, so, first of all I need to input the value of n, input the value of n and then I may go for a for loop for now i is equal to n because n will be the first value i is equal to n to i is equal to n to 1 step minus 1. What, what am I writing? I am just printing the value of i that is all there is only one statement inside this for loop ok and whenever i will become smaller than because it is starting from n and it is going up to 1 whenever it becomes smaller than 1 then what do i do i stop So, if n is equal to 10, so for i is equal to 10 to 1 step minus 1. So, first time I am printing 10, after that since my step is minus 1, so i becomes 9. So, I will be printing 9, then I will be printing 8 and so on, at last I will be printing 1. So, i is equal to, if n is equal to 10, i is equal to 10 to 1. After that, Okay, step is minus 1, 1 minus 1 will become 0. So, I will become 0. So, I will come out of this loop, it means I will be coming here and I will be stopping. Okay, fine. Now, let us see this problem draw a flow chart to print odd numbers up to n. We have already done it using without for loop using a decision box. Now, let us do it using a for loop. So, start. First of all, I need to know what is the value of n. So, input n, user will supply me the value of n. Now, I can have a for loop like this. I may say for i is equal to 1 because my first odd number is 1 to n. I have to go up to n. Okay. And then I am writing step 2. for i is equal, one, is equal to 1 to n step 2. Okay. And what do I do? I just print the value of i. This is body of my for loop, there is only one statement and once this for loop is over, I will come down and I will stop. Suppose n is equal to 5, for i is equal to 1 to 5 is step 2. So, first time I am printing the initial value that is I am printing 1. Then since my step is 2, so I will become 3. Okay. So, because I have to print from 1 to 5, so 3 is smaller than 5, so I will be printing 3. Next time my i will become step is 2, so 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, so I will become 5, 1 to 5 I have to print, so I will be printing 5. 
next time my i will become 7 so i won't be printing it i'll come out of the for loop okay now let us see if n is equal to 6 if n is equal to 6 i is equal to 1 i am printing 1 after that i is equal to 3 i am printing 3 then i is equal to 5 i am printing 5 then i is equal to 7 7 is greater than 6 because i have to go from 1 to 6 only so if n is equal to 6 then i have to go from 1 to 6 only so whenever the value of i became 7 at that time i'll come out of this loop so i'll be printing 1 3 and 5 only okay fine 